Okay, we're going to talk about the force that a magnetic field exerts on a moving charge. We'll, um, so magnetic fields do exert forces on charges, but they're not the same as the forces that electric fields exert on charges. We talked in previous chapters about um, the force on a charge placed in an electric field, and that force was the charge itself, Q, times E, the, the electric field. Here we'll get something a little bit different. And to, uh, to introduce the topic, I'd like to show you a, a demonstration. This is a demonstration of the force on an, a moving electron. I'm going to use this piece of equipment to boil off some electrons from this little circular plate. You may be able to see it. The electrons will come through a slit in this aluminum plate here. It's horizontal. And then the electrons will, they have a velocity in this direction, and then they will hit this screen, and that's when they will become visible to you. And I'm going to use this magnet to create a force on these electrons that will cause them to deflect either upward or downward. So first, just the electrons themselves. You'll be able to see a stream of electrons. And then I'm going to add a magnetic field in this direction toward you to cause them to deflect upward. So to, in order to understand in order to understand that deflection, let's use the right hand rule. The velocity of the electrons is in this direction. I'm going to put my thumb in that direction to denote the velocity. The magnetic field is in this direction toward you. Put my fingers in that direction for of my right hand. And then the, the force that results with the right hand rule is going to come out of my palm. So the force will be downward for a positively charged particle but electrons are not positively charged. And so the force is not in the direction out of the palm, but in the direction opposite of the palm. And that's what causes the upward deflection of the electrons. Let me do it one more time. And then this time, after doing a magnetic field in this direction, I'll reverse the magnetic field so it's coming toward me instead of toward you and see what happens then. Okay, here's the original scenario, the magnetic field toward you, creating an upward deflection. And then if we reverse the direction of the magnetic field, we get, as you can see, a downward deflection. We can also, we can work that one out with the right hand rule as well. The velocity is still in this direction, so my thumb will go in that direction. And, but the magnetic field is now pointed toward me. So I have to orient my hand so that my fingers are pointed in the direction of the magnetic field. The force on a positive charged particle would be up out of my palm, but these are not positively charged particles, so the force will be down. That's the deflection on an electron by a magnetic field. Okay, what we've just seen is a cathode ray tube, and these are um, how televisions were made for years and years. And some of you may have seen one, the big, big tube, you call it the boob tube. It's a, it's a big screen. We're not talking about the flat screens of nowadays. We're talking about the old fashioned uh, televisions. So there's an electron gun that produces electrons in the same way that I boiled them off with that device. And the electrons have some uh, velocity and then they're subjected to a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the direction of their motion. 
So that's denoted here by these red uh, upward arrows. And then the deflection of the electrons is in a direction that's perpendicular both to the velocity and to the magnetic field. So the deflection um, in this case is to the right. That's the force on these electrons. And, and um, so they're all three perpendicular directions. That force is in a, uh, well not necessarily. The velocity and the magnetic field don't have to be perpendicular to each other. But they form a plane and the force is going to be perpendicular to that plane. And, and we'll talk about the, um, the right-hand rule as we did in the short, uh, a little bit in the video. Then what happens is these electrons, this, these magnetic fields are controlled um, by electromagnets and they cause the electrons to deflect to the right, to the left, up and down. Um, the electrons then scan across the screen at a certain speed and, and create the, the picture on the screen. All right, let's state the magnitude of the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field. It's a very important concept, one that comes up over and over and over in physics, and it will, uh, we'll see it in, in various guises, especially in this chapter, but also in subsequent chapters. The magnitude of the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field. Well, let's remind ourselves what the force is on a charged particle in an electric field. What did it look like? It was the charge itself times the electric field. Well, here we have something that looks quite a bit different. The force of a magnetic field on a charged particle depends on the charge, the magnitude, the absolute value of the charge, as before. Depends on the strength of the field, as before. So we have those two pieces. But there are two more pieces that are important here. The speed. V, the particle. So, and that's measured in meters per second. Um, so what happens if the, if the charge is not moving? The speed is zero. The force of the magnetic field on that, on that particle will be zero. So the, the particles have to be moving in order for magnetic fields to exert a force on them. Not true for electric uh, force. And then there's also an angle. There's an angle between V and B when they're placed tail to tail. So let's say that we've got uh, a velocity vector in this direction. And let's say that we've got a magnetic field in this direction. Um, and we place them tail to tail, that's the way we're supposed to do it. And then the angle theta is the angle between them when they're placed tail to tail. So that's all the pieces. But what we see from this is that not only do we have to have a speed, but the speed has to have a particular character. What happens if theta equals zero, if V and B are both in the same direction. Then theta is zero, and sine of zero, sine of theta equals zero, is zero. So there's not going to be a force in this case. So let's talk about the direction of the force. Um, actually, let me say one more thing about this. There's no force here. There's no force in this case. How so? In this case, theta was zero. What's theta in this case? If V and B are, are opposite, they point in opposite directions, well, this is theta equals 180 degrees. And the sine of zero is zero, but the sine of 180 degrees is also zero. And so we get no force in this case. We're going to get the maximum possible force if V and B are perpendicular to each other. In that case, then, this sine will have the sine of 90, and that's 1. And that's the biggest the sine can ever get. So 
Let's talk about the direction of the force. I told you that the, that the force itself is perpendicular to the plane formed by the velocity and the magnetic field. So if this is the velocity vector here, and this is the magnetic field vector here, then the way that you use the right hand rule is you place your thumb like we did in the video. You place your thumb in the direction of the velocity. And your fingers, you point them in the direction of the magnetic field. And then the force on a positive charged particle is the direction that comes out of your palm. So, and you have to use your right hand. That's why they call it the right hand rule. So, let me try and replicate that with my own hand. Um, the veloc velocity is in the direction of my thumb, the magnetic field is in the direction of my fingers, and the force that results from the magnetic field is out of my palm, pointing up. Okay, so let's just review it. State the direction of the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field. If the charge is positive, point the fingers of the right hand in the direction of the magnetic field and the thumb in the direction of the velocity, just exactly what we did. The palm faces the direction of the force. That's exactly what we did. If the charge is negative, such as for an electron with a cathode ray tube, then the force is in the opposite direction. So this is the force for a positive charge, and the force for a negative charge will be in the opposite direction. Okay. So the following conditions must be met for a charge to experience a magnetic force when placed in a magnetic field. Charge must be moving. We talked about that before. You can't have V equals zero. So V is not equal to zero. The velocity of the charge must have a component that is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. If the velocity is parallel to the field, no force. It, it just moves on through without any magnetic force at all or if the velocity is opposite the direction of the field, there's no force either. All right. Um, v cross B is, uh, gives a maximum, if B and, so this is what we talked about before. If V and B are 90 degrees away from each other, you get the maximum possible force. And let's do this with our hands. V is going to go in the direction, our thumb is going to go in the direction of V. So in this, in this diagram, that direction of V is out of the screen. So I'm going to put my hand, and I encourage you to do this with me. Um, have your thumb pointing out of the screen, then your fingers pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, and the force on a positive charged particle will be out of your palm. Okay, if the velocity is, is not out of the screen, it's at an angle, we can still do the same thing. Instead of my hand, my thumb coming straight out, my, hand, my thumb's going to come at more of an angle. Magnetic field is in the direction of my fingers. Force is still out. But the force won't be a maximum. It'll be, this, the sine of the angle theta will be less than one. All right, let's do an example. A proton in a particle accelerator has a speed of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So we're happy about that. That means we're going to have a magnetic force on it. The proton encounters a magnetic field, and there's the magnetic field magnitude. We haven't talked about that yet. should have mentioned that in the, in the earlier concept. Uh, right here. The magnetic field is measured in a unit called the Tesla. Tesla is a famous uh, uh, physicist that invented the Tesla coils, which will be one of our most spectacular demonstrations later on. 
But uh, that is the, the, fee, the, um, the, the unit that magnetic fields are measured in. We'll also talk about a, another unit called the Gauss in just a bit. That's the unit. And um, force measured in newtons, charge measured in coulombs, velocity or speed measured in meters per second, magnetic field measured in Tesla. Okay, so back here, so there's our four, 0.4 Tesla magnetic field. And the direction makes an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the proton's velocity. So this is a positive charge now. And this angle here is 30 degrees. All right, find the magnitude and the direction of the force on the proton and find the acceleration of the proton and what would the force and acceleration uh, be if the particle were an electron. Here's the calculation. The, uh, the magnitude of the force will be the magnitude of the charge, the speed, magnetic field, magnitude, sine of the angle theta. The charge on the proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The speed is, uh, as, as we were told in the problem, 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. That's pretty high velocity. Magnetic field, this is a good sized magnetic field. You don't see that um, every day. So actually, neodymium magnets will give you fields that strong if you're up really close to those um, rare earth magnets. Sine of the angle 30. So that gives a force of 10 to the minus 13 newtons. And you say, well, that's not a very big force. And I say, well, Proton's not a very big particle either, and so that force is enough to shove the proton around in a big way. The uh, force, if, if the magnetic field is the only force acting on it, then the force will be the mass of the proton times its acceleration, and we can solve this equation for the acceleration by dividing through by the mass. Mass is cancel, and we get that the acceleration is F over M. Plugging in, uh, you can just look up the, the uh, mass for a proton. Here's the force that we just calculated. And you get an acceleration that's a pretty big acceleration. So there's going to be a lot of acceleration going on. It's 10 to the 13 meters per second squared. Um, so in the case of case C, the mag for an electron instead of a proton, the magnitude of the force is the same but the direction is opposite and the acceleration is going to be a lot greater. Why is that? And the reason is the mass of the, ele of the electron is much smaller than the mass of the proton, so it's going to have a lot bigger acceleration. Now, the acceleration is in the direction of the force. How did you know that? How did I know that? Well, the sum of the forces is the mass times the acceleration. That's Newton's second law. You're right. And so whatever the direction of that force is, there's only one force acting on it, has to be the same as the direction of the acceleration. Get that from Newton's second law. Define a gauss. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is about one half a gauss. And what is a gauss? A gauss is 10 to the minus 4 tesla. So it's a much smaller one um, one gauss is, is one ten thousandth of a tesla. So it's a very small unit, and the Earth's magnetic field is about half a gauss. Not very strong, but, but definitely strong enough to push your uh, compass needles around. Um, another example, a positively charged particle is stationary in, in a uniform magnetic field. Stationary means not moving. The region is blah, 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 which is uh, true. There are no gravitational no electrical fields. There's only magnetic fields. Which of these uh, statements is true? It's stationary to start off with. Is it going to move? The answer is no, it's not. Why? Its speed is zero. It's stationary. The magnetic field is going to have absolutely no effect on it. All right, what about this one? Which one's true? The magnitude of the force is largest when the particle is not moving. 
No, nope, can't be true because there's no force at all on it then. The force is zero if the particle moves perpendicular to the field. That's not true either because the force is, m is maximum when it moves perpendicular to the field. The magnitude of the force is largest when the particle moves parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. What about that? If they're moving parallel, no force. The angle is zero. And the force depends on the component of the particle's velocity that's perpendicular to the field. And, and we talked about that earlier. That is, the, that is the answer. Let's eliminate this one. So V sine theta, that, that gives you the component that's perpendicular to the field. Force acts in a direction of motion for a positively charged particle. So if the, this one's saying, well, if the particle's moving this direction, the force will be in that exact same direction. That would have been true for an electric field. It's not, well, for an electric field, it's in the direction of the electric field itself, not the direction of motion. But here, the force is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the velocity and the magnetic field vectors. So if this is velocity and that's magnetic field, that, that creates a plane, and it'll be either, um, it'll be perpendicular to that plane. So that can't be true either. <coughs> An electron travels due east. There's a couple of problems in, in the homework that will, that will help you get some practice on these. An electron travels due east in a region where the magnetic field is due north. What's the direction of the force on the electron? So let's draw ourselves um, a, a map and remind ourselves about the directions of north, south, east, and west. If we're looking at the ground from above, south is opposite north. <coughs> And if we're facing north, then our right hand, when we extend our right hand out, that faces east. Um, and then west is opposite east. And then there are two other directions that help to, to, to define a 3D space. And we'll need a 3D space here because everything doesn't happen in a plane with a magnetic field. Some things happen perpendicular to that plane. So then we ask, what's, what are the other two directions? Well, this direction that comes out of this, this is a horizontal plane. With these four directions in that horizontal plane. The direction that comes this direction is called up, right? So up is out of the screen. And what's the direction into the screen? If this screen is representing a horizontal plane, you say, well, down. And you're right. Down is into the screen. And you just have to remember that we're not talking about up being up up the screen, we're thinking about this screen being l laid uh, flat. So, so now, let's see, the electron is traveling due east, so it's an electron. So we'll put it in as a minus sign, and the velocity is due east. The magnetic field is due north. All right, happy day. What's the direction of the force on the electron? Well, how are we going to actually solve this? We're going to have to use the right-hand rule. And the trick here with the right-hand rule is to, you've got to orient that right hand until your thumb points in the direction of the velocity and your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. So let's have a try. There's the velocity. It points to the right, to the east. So I've got to have my thumb pointing in that direction. Here's a magnetic field. It's pointing north. I've got to have my fingers pointing in that direction. So then, the force on a positively charged particle is going to be out of my palm. So it's going to be out this way. But is this a positively charged particle? No, it's a negatively charged particle. So, um, 
instead of being out of my palm, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So the charge is negative. So the force is into the screen. And what direction is that? You say down. So in real life, if you had a, uh, an electron that was moving, um, let's say this direction is, is east, well, actually in this particular room, that direction is north, that direction is east. So if the electron is moving east in this direction, let's just denote that the velocity vector with uh, Oh, you can't really see it very well. Okay, but anyway, the, the velocity is in this direction. The magnetic field is in this direction. I'm going to put, uh, and we're now thinking about this being a horizontal plane, which it is. Put my thumb in the direction of the velocity that's toward you. And my finger's in the direction of the magnetic field. And the, the direction out of my palm would be up, and that would have been the direction of the force if the particle was positively charged, but it's not positively charged. It's negatively charged. And so the force is down, which you're used to. All right, that's how to do those. Um, downward toward the Earth. <laughs>